Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and this is Rincy Reads. Today I'm going to be going through the Read Harder Challenge and talking about what books I have read that fulfill the challenge so far. Um, I was planning on doing this originally in July because that would be past the halfway point in the year, but I realized that I have actually read more than half of the challenges or I've fulfilled more than half of the challenge so far. So I figured that now would be a pretty good time to do an update. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through the challenge in the order of the list that I have it here. Um, and I'm just going to talk really briefly about the book that I put in for that category. Uh, now I will say a couple of things. There are a lot of categories where I've read multiple books that would have fulfilled the task, but usually what I do with the Read Harder Challenge is just the first book that I read that fulfills that task. I will just like sort of plunk it in. Occasionally I do sort of move things around or what I do is like if a book can complete more than one task, I have it complete the task that might seem more difficult, at least for me personally and my own reading taste. Another thing with the Read Harder Challenge is that the first half of the year is significantly easier for me because I already read pretty widely across the board. <laughs> so a lot of times there are just like three or four challenges that are really, really difficult for me and the rest aren't too bad. So right now we're going through the ones that aren't too bad for me. The really hard ones for me this year are going to be like the micro press one, um, the poetry that's not about love that I think it has to be a work in translation as well. There are a couple of others in here where I'm just like, eh, I'm not sure yet. But luckily there is a Goodreads group. Um, I will link it down below in case you guys are interested and you weren't aware. On there they have like a thread for every task and people are putting in either what they plan on reading or they put in suggestions for other options that you could do for each task. So that's something that I plan on doing uh, when I gets time for me to try to fulfill those, which will be soon. <laughs> Also, if you're a part of uh, Book Riot Insiders, which is a new thing, I will link to the website down below. But one of the benefits that you get for being part of Book Riot Insiders is that you get access to the Read Harder podcast, which is great. It's uh, hosted by Josh Corman and Sharifa, who are both fantastic. They made the Book Riot Read Harder videos over on the Book Riot channel last year. And so they turned it into a podcast that's a subscriber only. But it's also just, again, a great source for recommendations. And they're doing one episode on every topic. So with all that said, let's get started with the tasks and the books that I read. So first there is read a book about sports. And for that one, I used You Will Know Me by Megan Abbott. Uh, technically kind of about sports, but it features characters who do gymnastics. So yeah, I'm counting this one. Next is read a debut novel. And the first debut that I read this year was Iron Cast. Next was read a book about books. And for that one, I used The Clothing of Books by Jhumpa Lahiri, which I adored. Uh, but that's just because I'm a huge Jhumpa Lahiri fan. And I also really enjoy books about books. <laughs> and this one talks about like book design and book covers and such. For read a book set in Central or South America or by a Central or South American author, I used Fever Dream by Samantha Schweblin. She is originally from Buenos Aires. For read a book by an immigrant or a book that has a Central immigration narrative, I chose Panchinko by Min Jin Lee. This again was just like the first one that dealt with immigration and this one deals with Korean characters who immigrate into a Japan. So I kind of like the fact that I read a book that had to deal with immigration, but it wasn't necessarily US immigration. For read an all agents comic, I counted Goldie Vance, although I'm not completely sure if Goldie Vance is considered all ages technically. Uh, so I could also include Nightlights, which I talked about in my May wrap up because that one is definitely an all ages comic. For read a book published between 1900 and 1950, I ended up using Cannery Row by John Steinbeck, which was published in 1945. So, you know, just squeezing it in there. <laughs> For read a book that is set more than 5,000 miles from your current location, I chose Big Little Lies because it is set in Australia. I live in Chicago and it is definitely more than 5,000 miles to Australia from here. For read a fantasy novel, I went with Fate of the Tearling by Erica Johansson, which is the third book in the Queen of the Tearling series. For read a book that has been frequently challenged or banned in your country, I went with Song of Solomon by Toni Morrison. Basically any Toni Morrison book would work. This one a lot of people are also using, or Toni Morrison in general, people are using for read a classic by an author of color, but I am using the definition of classic to mean something, a book published before 1950. And if you watch my May book haul, you would have seen that I picked up an L. Larson book recently because I plan on using that. For read a superhero comic with a female lead, I plugged in Batgirl Volume 3, which I just read this past month. Um, I was also thinking about using Ms. Marvel. I also have a bunch of 
bunch of other Marvel comics that have female leads that I was planning on using just depending on which one I read first. For read a collection of stories by a woman, I went with Whatever Happened to Interracial Love by Kathleen Collins, which I just read this past month. The final one that I've completed so far is read a book where all of the point of view characters are people of color. And for that one, I used uh, American Street by E.B. Zoboy. Again, there's a bunch of different books that I've read that could fulfill this one, but I was specifically looking for a book that had multiple points of views. Um, so that way it would feel like it was filling the challenge a little bit more than just finding a book with a single point of view. So yeah, that one has multiple points of view, but they're all black characters in that story. So it works. I have finished 13 out of the 24. So I'm a little bit more than halfway through the challenge so far. But like I said earlier, the first half usually easier than the second half. My goal is to keep going with this and doing at least two per month. I'm really bad about remembering to mention them in my wrap up because a lot of times I end up sort of filling out the paper just whenever or filling out my spreadsheet because I use the spreadsheet whenever I realize it or whenever I realize I haven't filled it out in a while. So I don't do it like consistently every month. I sort of pick my books and then when I finished reading them, I enter them in at some point in the future. So I will tell you that the ones that I have planned so far is like I said, Nella Larson for a classic by a person of color. I think I'm going to use American War by Omar al Akkad uh, for the book about war potentially. I have to read the book first because I'm not completely sure if it, that fulfills the task. Otherwise, I'm going to do Homage to Catalonia by George Orwell as that one because I know that one definitely has to deal with war. And then for travel memoir, I think I'm going to do French Milk by Lucy Nisley, which is one of the few Lucy Nisley graphic novels that I have yet to read. Um, That one is about her time in France, but I'm not 100% set on that one just yet. But there aren't any like travel memoir like books, non-graphic novels that I'm really interested in reading. Oh, and then for read a book set within 100 miles of your location, I want to do Negro Land uh, because that one is a memoir and the author grew up in Chicago. So that works perfectly. I've been wanting to read that book forever. I just waited way too long to pick it up. So that will be coming soon as well. So yeah, that's everything that I have for this video. Um, if you are doing the Read Harder challenge or attempting it, uh, feel free to leave a comment down below letting me know how you guys are doing with the challenge so far. If you are ahead of schedule or behind schedule, whatever. Um, like I always say, these things are just meant to be sort of like fun challenges, not to put too much pressure or stress on you as a reader. I'm really determined to finish it this year because I feel like I'm doing a really good job of staying on top of it this year as opposed to previous years. But I feel like things always change significantly in the second half of the year. So we'll see how it goes. And again, the second half is always harder because it deals with all the challenges that I can't easily find options for. So it's going to require a little bit more work on my end on the second half. So I might spend like June since I know what my June books are going to be for the most part. I might spend some time sort of brainstorming and planning out options for some of those more difficult ones and trying to maybe order some books or get some books from the library that will fulfill a couple of those so that way I don't just have difficult ones that I need to do in like October, November, December. <laughs> but we'll see how it goes. So yeah, I will talk about this more at the end of the year or the beginning of next year, I guess. Um, or maybe at the end of this year, if I finish the challenge early, maybe I'll do a wrap up video. But that's all I have for now. And thanks for watching.